Sports Day Night. I am Jay, your GM, and this is, well, 60%, three-fifths of the Fed Five. We are going to do an interlude episode tonight where we just hang out, chat about the campaign, talk about Torg, talk with you guys. If you guys have any questions about the campaign, about Torg, about the characters, about the players. Eh, maybe not that last one, but definitely if you have questions about anything Torg related, we're going to be talking about it tonight. Phantom, Mr. Furious, and Josh Kage, good to see you. So, uh, we're in the middle of the diamond argument. You guys, what's your XP total at right now? You're almost beta clearance, correct? I like how, I like how everyone immediately gave me glazed looks and did not tell them that this was the first question. 40. You're at 40, so you guys are two X. By the time we hit the end of the diamond armor, bit, there will be, um, you guys will be beta clearance. Now, beta clearance has some changes that will be going on to, I want to make sure that we can hear back up. Can you just say something? Yeah. There we go. Say All something. Right. Thank you. So, yeah. Beta Clearance changes a lot of things. The You guys get access to new abilities uh, from the Beta Clearance Primer that I will hand out to you. But also, the GM starts to get possibilities specifically to spend on any foes. So they can be used to soak. Uh, they can be used to enhance rolls. They cannot be used to soak unless they are reality rated foes. It also means I can throw tougher or more creatures into you. Because at beta clearance, you guys are, you have moved out of kind of that beginning stage. And I would argue that in, I mean, that's, that's Mr. Furious. He is my darkness device who channel, channels possibilities from the void. I would argue that it's not like levels as it is in, like, say, a fantasy swampy game. But more like tiers. So you know how in a in a typical twenty level game, they do like levels one to five are kind of your zero to hero, and then six to ten you've started to like gain some regional renown. That is where we're at. You guys are going to start getting some regional renown. You're going to be able to requisition more. You're going to be you're entrusted with more things. I think for the Fed's fight, it's more like regional infamy than renown. That is a that is a <laughs> uh, which actually leads me to my first question. Uh, it is Torg's Day Night, Zero Earth Element. Good to have you here. Uh, so, Becca, we're going to start with you. Oh, dear. You have jumped into the middle of the FET5 game. Yes. What is your take on the FET5, on Istanbul, kind of what's going on? How have you, because uh, you were part of the Horseman game. You were part of mm -hmm. the Eternity Shards game. This is actually your third Torg campaign that you are participating in. And... So yeah, what's what's your what's your takeaway so far? Ben is judging you silently. So, oh, uh, Ben will be Ben isn't silent. It's fine. Um, the judge is loud. Um, um, what what is my takeaway? Um, the. The FET 5 definitely feels a bit more chaos. Mm -hmm. um, as I as I think about um, the first group I was in when we didn't when none of us really knew what was going on um, and how to play Torg uh, player wise, we were kind of aiming for an an end. But we were more or less all aiming for that end. Um, and then the horseman was just like a really nice oiled machine of like <laughs> chugging in one direction and, you know, lighting things on fire as they went. Um, yeah, that's true. This one is then definitely a, I know what Kit wants. <laughs> And that's the only one I know. It should not surprise you that uh, Jenny has been referred to off screen as the the mom. Like Kit is the mom of the Fet Five. Because we're talking about the mummy. Uh, but mummy. I never get so. <laughs> as Josh says, mummies plus Molotov cocktails always equal a, a big boom. So let's jump into one of the chat questions. Gabe, Mr. Furious helped redesign Zor. Yes. How are you feeling about I, it? I love it, and I have been trying to play Zorba with an, an added oomph to live up to the character that uh, was designed for me. So, 
I hope that has been coming through. I try. I've been trying to like make make the uh, the role play match the the, uh, the template here. I will say it was interesting to me. I think, you mean you can't plan this kind of thing. We, mm -hmm. we like to say here that the dice tell a story, and the fact that you willingly chose to basically be absorbed into a new custom, mm -hmm. only to then in your first big moment as New Zorba, to glory. And then die. On a persuasion roll. <laughs> and then get come back. Uh, yeah. It it was pretty interesting to see kind of how all of that mm -hmm. came together. How are you guys feeling about, like, I'll put Becca uh, on this judging stand. How are you guys feeling about uh, Morgan? How's she fitting with the group? It's sort of hilarious how hyper-competent she is. <laughs> <laughs> It's Becca's third campaign. She knows how no, to but it's, it's sort of hilarious, like, because of, like, her backstory of coming out of, like, this team that got some separated and was, like, an elite Delphi Council team. We had to rescue her. And, like, <laughs> she feels like the only competent member of the team. Like, perhaps. Yeah. But also, she's a little bit like that girl on the Magic School Bus who always said, we never shrunk down to the size of an atom at my old school. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> we did it. Camp and we'll be here in <laughs> uh, Well, uh, Becca, I promise that mm -hmm. the Diamond Armament has clues, if not direct paths, to where to what is going on with your old team. So, sure. Oh, I still need to get you those names, don't I? I wasn't going to mention that on stream, but it is now recorded for posterity. You have fallen into my trap. Much like Dr. Names. Mobius. <laughs> yeah, I allow me to send them to plans you. <laughs> plans um, all right, so, yes, you do. And uh, give me a little blurb on each of them on what you think would be cool for them to be. Okay. Uh, uh, on, on, on organic, on uh, I think... I do think that is definitely the FET5 measure of competence, uh, which is kiloton explosions. So let's see, let's, let's go back through this. There was the initial, I think the, the, the first one that really established the cover of our first comic is the base exploding behind you with the wreckage of the Zeppelin that you chose to turn around and Sent back in. That, that was the moment, I think, that we just decided to become the Fed family. Yes. Before that, you were just five people. Mm hmm Yeah. What, whatever we were, it was made that night. It was forged in the fires of a burning Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and honestly, I mean, I think, you know, kiloton explosions is a good measure. I think, like, Number of vehicles made ours by way of our actions yeah. is another good measure of our success. I, maybe maybe it's the bijou. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the chartreuse in the bijou. Maybe it's just because it's an interlude and I'm feeling generous. But I did point out, baby isn't working because there are parts missing. Mm -hmm. So you're telling us we have to fix baby? No, no, I know what he's going to say. He said there are decommissioned babies at the movie studio there you go and or decommission tanks the movie studio <laughs> uh zero or Kelvin, you can have a possibility for that spot on dr mobius quote <laughs> <laughs> uh so we're in the middle of the diamond arc i wanted to do something that kind of let leaned into uh, both zorba's story as well as kind of this idea that the Nile Empire of Torg is not a historical Nile Empire, but far more a pulp movie version of the Nile Empire. And you guys are... <laughs> 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 I feel like I'm not looking at <laughs> And Mr. Fury turns this for a possibility. Um, and you guys have taken what I thought was a very sort of fun meta adventure and have delved even deeper into it in an attempt to make it an adventure about making the movie and subverting the propaganda machine, which was your idea. Where did that come from and kind of what have your thoughts been on the Diamond Armament as compared to, say, 
you know, our opening uh, adventure or uh, the Inferno scandal. Well, Kowalski's whole thing is that he's basically taken the zeitgeist of 80s action movies, mm -hmm. 70s, late 70s, 80s action movies, and taken them on as like an ethos. Mm -hmm. So the idea that basically you can change everything with a film is, is Very, basically it's it exactly you, exactly right? it's like that's exactly where he's at it changed kowalski to an expert right exactly and in and at least the way that i see it kowalski still thinks that potentially he could save dark gold in a similar fashion so i mean it's probably <laughs> utter nonsense but in his mind he thinks that's possible oh. so he's, he's sort of the opposite yeah so okay. so zero earth element who i get to i played in his uh brilliant tour game once and possibly here in the near future of the second. Uh, he is, uh, he said it's a brilliant move and I'm gonna have to like second that. You guys are the only way out is through that. <laughs> exactly. You look like you were, you were going to expound or extrapolate. Yeah. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I might, I might keep it under the hat for now. Hmm. All right. But uh, well, no, what the hell? We'll just spill the beans. Go for it. We're all we're all good role players here. Uh, Zorba's goal is to make a film that makes him look so good that everybody believes that watches it believes that he in fact is like cooler than Doctor Mobius. Oh. And then to take over the Cosm and become the new Dark Lord of. The Nile Empire. Oh, so you you, you're, you you would like to go full? Oh yeah, he he wants to displace Mobius. So like as the as like the High Lord, like yeah, on absolutely. track for the Torg. Yeah, that. That's that's where he's headed. I did not know that, <laughs> and we will we will have to uh, we will have to chat about that. He said, "Glory will help, Mister Furious." Uh, <laughs> uh, breaking, yeah, no, that's uh, that's basically uh, kind of kind of where we're going with this. Now. Well, I, that's to me is representative of his true embrace of the cosm. Like he is, he is, ab sense. he is yeah. like embraced the cosm down to its core, and therefore views himself as the true, like, rightful high lord of the Nile Empire. So instead of a dark lord, they have a an incredibly handsome actor, <laughs> as beautiful as the dawn, uh, yeah, or absolutely. as terrible as the dawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could uh, see that. He's got a he's got an evil sword. That'll help. It it is evil. I'm glad you picked up on it. Uh, I was worried I was being like every time you've used it, I kind of ramped up. Mm -hmm. Now, Ben, you said you had a theory about what's going on here at the movie studio. I mean, obviously they're. We kind of established the theory with this. I mean, give me like, like we're part of the theory we're talking. About. Like we've established that clearly they're putting eternity shards inside of people and shipping them to Cairo, mm -hmm. which is gross mm -hmm. and very upset. <laughs> <laughs> it's very poor medical practice, sir. Um, and so, so we know that's the that's the obviously the how they that's. Was there a different theory I was supposed to? I don't know. You said you had you had you had ideas of who was behind things. I mean, we have. I'm pretty sure the guy, the giant robot doctor guy, is actually the head in the jar. I think that was. I think so. I mean, he did do the psychic mojo on poor dumb Kowalski last week. <laughs> ben may think that. Who knows what Kowalski thinks? Kowalski's pretty sure that he just decided that everything was fine. Like, yeah, it's true. Go home. Everything is fine. Everything's fine. This is not the doctor you were looking for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, Becca, I, it, this may be a leading question because you've already answered this to a degree. Who Who is the character, let's say, outside of Kit <laughs> that Morgan has connected to the most? And again, aside from Tony, the uh, the robo group. Yeah, seriously, there, there needs to be something happening there. <laughs> I tried, man. I tried. The then fans demand it. And... and by fans, we mean that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if this is I'm like you know, <laughs> talk. Uh, speaking of Tony, I was highly amused uh, as chat was like, oh, Becca doesn't get her bow again. Oh, justice for Becca. And I was like, uh, 
Becca got three in Fading Sun, so I think Becca's doing fine. <laughs> that's, not, that's true, but I did I did keep them very much in the which which piece of cheese will be crushed by the blowtorch uh, yes. through that whole camping. Yes, there were, there was it was upsetting. Um, yes, I, mean, I would like a bow that is did not you make like Becca about cry? to die. I made Becca cry multiple times in the Fading Sun. Oh my gosh! Really? Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. Becca's just that invested of a, a, a gamer. That's how I choose to see it. Not that I'm that much of a bastard to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am invested, sure. Um, uh, outside of uh, Tony and Kit, um, I would say... Okay, so when it comes to Zorba... Um, <laughs> Morgan just has no idea like what he's thinking. She thought he was just See. she thought he was See. like what he presents the like s superficial actor human. Okay. And then he like kind of double crossed everybody. And then he kind no, of like no, saved he everybody. He, double, he didn't double cross anybody. <laughs> he has been perfectly um, on the level. Kit said, don't say yes. And Zorba said, yes. That's not double crossing. And... That's sure. just ignoring okay. somebody. Lying. It's fine. Um, <laughs> it's not so lying she's... if someone tells you to do something and then you don't do it. Okay, we'll get into semantics later about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> But like, and so I, I think that really threw Morgan. And so she's not entirely sure if she wants to actually ever trust Zorba. Um, Cause she's not entirely sure that she can. Cause then she saw him then change into the Nile empire version of himself. And then he goes on set and like wins everybody over with a smile. And she's like, nobody can possibly be that charming, right? Um, I do deserve to be the next High Lord. You're right, Becca. <laughs> I right, like, and so there's, there's. If if Zorba became the next High Lord, I have a feeling Morgan would kind of be like, no, this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how much I oppose it. Like, um, well, if I may, real quick, the yeah. chat brings up a really good point. I don't know if you guys know this, but Mobius gets cursed in his original cost to always fail at the cusp of victory. He has been trying to break this curse. Who cursed him? Um, I believe it was his father. It's a very personal curse. I have to... Is his father like a look at Or just like a jerk? Oh no, Mobius was definitely the jerk. Oh, okay. But his father... Uh, I mean... It's like one of those biblical things. Mobius dressed up like his brother, you know. It was the curse of Amit Ra. Uh, although he was evil, he couldn't bear to lose both of his sons, so he was unwilling to kill his son, so he banished them, one who became Mobius, who, of course, encountered a band of nomads. And so there's a he ordered he ordered his father desert, you will encounter to be granted the final the, the final wish and he mummifies him alive sent him walking among the gods. On the cusp of death. As he is screaming as his organs are being cut. He says, May you will forever fail the threshold of victory. So what? I mean, yeah, we probably need, do need to do spoiler text here, Mr. Furious. I apologize. Now, the only way is to see this as that filler episode between arcs and an anime show. I mean, basically just imagine all of our characters are suddenly randomly at the beach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a Fading Suns beach episode. That never oh, happened, we though. finally yeah. get one. <laughs> it always happens off screen. That's a other piece. Yeah. Of um, yeah. Thanks, Mr. Furious. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, that's, that's really what's going on there. Is that Mobius is, is attempting to buck this at all times? His his whole backstory is brilliant. I love it. Okay, so he has a good brother though. Uh, we're not gonna talk about this anymore. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> not the plot thread you're looking for. Um. All right, so let me ask you this: Having played in Tor, having seen a lot of different things, having done your own reading. What cosmos would you want the Fet Five to go to mm -hmm. that we haven't visited yet? 
Hmm. Does it have to be like a real cosm? Let's start with real cosm. Okay. Another question. All right. All right. More along those lines. I mean, I like the living land. That just sounds cool. Yeah. Dinosaurs. Yeah. Land of the Lost. Yeah. Mm. I've got. I've got. Taking off sense. your clothes. So we talk about dinosaurs a lot every yeah. day. I can actually see Kowalski thriving in the living land. Just, yeah. Though, I mean, to, to be honest, though, he probably would like Core Earth. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially if, the, if, if this is the Core Earth where John Wick is a documentary, which he, he probably is a little bit turned off by John Wick, to be honest. It's probably too a little He's violent. too handsome for Kowalski. He, not, not too <laughs> handsome. It's just too violent. Like, is he a good guy now? He's killed all these people. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> so, that's true. <laughs> I mean,. Certified organic, a guy in a bikini at the top of a ziggurat. I have done that. <laughs> I picked that up a list, don't have to go back. <laughs> so you're saying that when we do the Fat Five pinup camp, you do not want Kowalski. I feel like it would be less attractive somehow. All right, so let's talk about, like, let's head back and answer that question, then we'll cycle around to something Mr. Fury has mentioned. If you could take the Fed Five to any one cause, what would it be? Um, I do agree that I think Living Lands would be a lot of fun. Um, I would like to check out Pan Pacifica sometime, because that was supposed to be one of our arcs at one point, and then we got different characters that came in and took us to a different cosm. And so it was like, no, come back, Pan Pacifica. <laughs> And the Pan Pacifica stuff should be coming out sometime next year. And we'll do an unboxing. We'll have our next installment of Zane Talks Tour because Zane doesn't want to do the last Gospod review until he has all of the Gospods in front of him. I do think the Living Land could be a lot of fun. And just, uh, you guys know that I use this to mine ideas for, mm -hmm. for future adventures. So there may be a Fet 5 Living Land interlude. And we have the delightful Bureau G, uh, which whose Christmas episode is coming up, where we will do another uh, Pan Pacifica run. Is Ooh. that where we get to find find Delilah living up in the living land? Who so knows? What's swinging from the branches. Where Kowalski still assumes Delilah is with them at all times, but invisible. <laughs> Yeah, you know. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, so, so Zorba clearly has an evil sword. Mm. Both for those of you who've been following along home, and those of you who have just tuned in tonight. For you, if there may be spoilers. But we also have the fact that Brother Block, the noble paladin, has made a deal with something in Tharkhold, and now has melted metal horns. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Let, let's start with Ben. Is Ben, you want this like deep? I don't. It's, it's one of those one of those things where it's really in character. I think would be deeply hard for Kowalski to actually express, yeah, because of who he is. But I think on a fundamental level, he feels not so much betrayed, but like I guess kind of heartbroken, like. You're the, you're a paladin, and then you made this choice, and sort of like, I'm the devil, I'm the, you know, if, if of the two of us, I'm the bad guy, um, I'm the guy who carries around the giant gun, you're the paladin, you're the one who heals people, and now suddenly you're the one with horns, and I'm somehow the beacon of hope here. So mm -hmm. it's that, yeah, that was a, I mean, like, to me, when I was thinking back to the story, I was like, yeah, if you if you ever decided to somehow do a you know an RPG lit story, that would be a good that would be mm -hmm. a turn. Like that would be a, a a first or second act turn where like the story hinges between these two characters hinges on that moment. We're gonna have to talk about. Uh, I understood uh, both halves of that turn, but not. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. okay. All right, uh, but this is I should say this is not the first time I've got a pal with a silver soul. What is wrong with our paladins, man? Uh, yeah. You don't play the paladin unless you want to sell your soul in the first place. Yeah, it's true. No you one plays a good character unless they want to be corrupted. I agree, Mr. Furious. This, this, uh, this Fet Five Apple is far, <laughs> far squishier than I initially thought. Um, all right, so let me ask you this: because we had we had a near death, a near martyr experience this week. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start with Beck. 
Becca, if you had, if, if Morgan died next week, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you had to make a new character for the Fet Five, what would you bring to the table? Someone equally competent. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, Not your typical second character fallback. Somebody who's constantly high and doped out of their mind. I don't understand why you're so upset by this. <laughs> that, that's, that's I could. Worst character. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I could play somebody like that, JM. Thanks for uh, bringing that up. Um, Her character is now invincible. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I think it would depend on where we wanted to aim next like if we're hanging out here in the Tharkold Nile Empire I think it'd be fun to pull off like some something from Tharkold mm -hmm. um like I really enjoyed the Nile Empire Cosm abilities um but yeah I think I just want to start like keep exploring all the different Cosms the ones that I haven't really touched yet um because you've done a core earth and a Nile Empire and now an Isle character. Yeah, and I've put together I put together somebody from Pan Pacifica, I think, but scrapped them kind of last minute um, instead. So, I mean, yeah, like there's, there's so many different Cosm. It's, uh, it's one of those that I'd be like, okay, well, which Cosm do I want to do? And then what, um, themes and kind of stereotypes would I pull from that? Yeah. Somebody uh, constantly like high and drunk would be great. Uh, <laughs> the chat is saying that I should take you to the mixed zone of Oroch and Pan Pacifica in Southeast Asia and have two different types of zombies in that team. Be like mm, Resident cool. Evil Vietnam. Yeah, Resident Evil Vietnam. That would suck. <laughs> that would suck a lot. <laughs> I'm glad you put them together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, don't worry. We're coming to what I think is going to be the best question of the evening and the one that the chat is going to uh, to enjoy mm -hmm. the most. So uh, let's go with Zorba. If or with Gabe. Gabe, if Zorba died next week, who would you bring to the table? Okay. He is a caveman from the living land who is considered to be the greatest poet that ever lived by the other caveman because he can use two syllable words and his <gasps> name is oh. Shakespeare. <laughs> and his and his character art would just be some like piece of cave art that I took from like, you know, some Neolithic cave picture. Zorba can never die. <laughs> I don't know. I would watch that show. I, I would you limit probably it. more than I watched Caveman Lawyer. But <laughs> I would also limit my character to one and two syllable words. I would deduct possibility if you used anything more than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's be a I, I think you heard. Sir, now the chat's going to make sure that you have all the possible <laughs> uh, Mr. Furious did point out the paradox of <laughs> syllable, even three syllable word. Um, three word sound words. Three word sound words. I will, uh, yeah, you guys do need to go to court at some point because it is one of the few. I feel like with Torg, some of our, like we want to make characters from Torg or Earth. Or, we really want to experience all of the other weird costumes. All right, so if if Kowalski were to go out, if Kowalski were to go out, I'd be sad. But everyone, would everyone. Be sad. <laughs> Kowalski is a great character. Yeah. I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because perhaps I have not actually don't have full information about Pan Pacific. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would play like an uplifted Gibbon. Ooh, yeah, you could play it up with it. Because, I mean, for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, because if you haven't seen Hitman Monkey, you should go watch it. Um, <laughs> but secondly, um, 
Gibbons are awesome. And I feel like there could be a lot of fun with that. Uh, certified to Organic said you could just bring Reggie in. That's true. Reggie, Reggie's pretty awesome. Yeah, Reggie. Reggie's pretty But here's the thing. Reggie is awesome. Alistair is awesome. But Reggie plus Alistair is... That's uh, a winning combination. That is a winning combination. The, okay, so if I had a third option... <laughs> okay, third And this is, this is... This is only remind because of the B-team, but... Teddy's character. Teddy from the yeah. B-team. Yeah. Like... Who's like the the I mean, gadget? I, yeah, I would love to do like a conspiracy theorist. Who, I mean, because basically most people inside these cosmos are completely unaware of the fact that there's really anything outside of this. So if you could get some straight up core tinfoil hat, like I don't know, ex-military or something that is like trying to tie all this together and figure it out. It could be fun. T tie the invasion to all the other, like, right. I mean, grand conspiracies. Exactly. Oh, that'd be... Yeah. And, I mean, especially since now, apparently, cryptids start calling out of the woodwork. Yeah. And magic is suddenly working again. You could have fun with that. The Gauntman right. is definitely JFK returned to life. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we can have fun with that. All right. So, one last question before we get to the meaty question that I've, I've had planned. Um, so, we'll start with Ben. If Kowalski were to go out or retire, how does he go out and retire in your in your house? He definitely goes out. He doesn't retire. Okay. Like So you're you're gonna take the Kurgan route? It's better to burn out than to fade away. Yeah, well I think too, I mean, again, in all the movies he's ever seen, like, you have to get to like a bad reboot before the guy's actually retired. And even then he's coming back. So in, in his mind, you're never he's never gonna retire. Um so probably he, played by Tom Cruise. I mean, but Tom Cruise is never gonna yeah. die either, so that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but, and, and I understand it, because uh, he's been baiting free since 83. Has he been? <laughs> How can we tell? <laughs> so, I mean, because I, as I understand it, uh, Tech Medieval is a functionally immortal until someone kills him. Thanks, Thanks Zero Breath Element. Yes. Um, so, if they're functionally immortal, I, like I said, again, I think probably death is not really something he thinks about big deal um i mean it's a thing that he does out of people <laughs> but so i think yes he'd have to go out in a place of glory and mortality i think mortality is just something other people suffer from right and cool yeah. his brain falls his brain makes a lot of <laughs> yeah. so i think i think he would go out in a place of glory and i think probably he would in classic dark old fashion i think he would probably take try and take down the biggest person he could in the process if he's going to go out and take down whoever he could at the top all right uh, Becca, how does Morgan go out for retirement? Um, if she were to retire, uh, it's like in a secluded place in Isle where nobody can talk to her and she's just <laughs> surrounded by nature and she does the whole, <laughs> yeah, she does the whole Unlocked. like grumpy, grumpy hermit thing. Um, that's yeah. That's what would happen if she retired. Um, however, similarly, I I highly doubt she will ever get around to retiring. Um, it would it would probably be. I mean, yeah, it's it'd be in a blaze of glory. Um, magic flying everywhere. Mm -hmm. It'd be bad. That'd be cool. Like it would, it would just be one of those where then she would have sacrificed herself for the group, um, because she lost her previous group. She's not going to lose this one type thing. Um, although, and I never got around to finishing this question. Oh, go for it. I will say uh, that. So then, out of all of the group besides Kit, um, the one that doesn't confuse her is Kowalski because he is so <laughs> honest and straightforward and so she, so she he's the one that she's like okay no I I get this guy the others I don't I don't understand so uh, if she had to team up with somebody besides Kit it would she'd prefer probably Kowalski he he'd be down I think okay so when I think of Kowalski I think of a really bad 90s movie <laughs> called Surf Ninjas I don't know if you guys have ever seen Surf. Oh, I did. I love Surf Ninjas. And uh, Rob Schneider is in that movie. And every time he speaks, like, the wise ninja master's like, you keep him around. He has, like, a 
like a child would keep a monkey or a snake <laughs> as a pet, he has. And sometimes, sometimes Kowalski comes across. <laughs> like a wise ninja surf master? Yes, that is yeah. exactly where I was going. <laughs> and we know how Zorba ends, taking the throne of... Well, that's how he retires. That's right. If it were to end, it'd be because Morgan kills him, Brutus and Cassius style, to stop him from. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. And to Morgan. <laughs> if yes. that happens, that's going on a t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will commission Mr. Bob Crumb to draw it. <laughs> and now Gabe is like, now I want this t shirt. <laughs> I don't know what you yeah. want more now. Death or High Lord shit. I wonder if we could get Mid Journey to like Brutus kills Caesar in the style of Frank for the <laughs> and just see what it comes Ooh. up with. Yeah. Um Alright, so I thought what we would do for this last uh little bit of the session is do something fun that will appear in the stream. Okay. Uh and chat, you are completely involved with this. And I haven't decided yet whether I will let chat have the veto power or the voting power. Uh, but I have a series of questions. Okay, I'll get in the and chat. As, Hang on. As you know, you can't vote for your own idea. I know what your Twitch ID <laughs> is, Becca. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Everything's okay, then. Um, as you guys know, uh, most of the causes of Tor are created by a mashup of cool genres, right? Um, or a, a core idea from from stories or, or, or pop culture or things like that. So you still don't get your possibility, Becca. It literally... <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fury. So what I thought would be is there's this idea of mini cosmos, microcosms, strange other places that exist in the infinite verse. So I thought it'd be fun to come up with a mini cosm that the Fet Five will encounter at some point. Okay. So what I'd like from the chat is do you guys want veto power? You guys want comment power. Do you want veto power or do you want to vote on the ideas for the matchup? And then after this, I need to tell you about the corruption of the Paladin story and the first time that I did that crime game story. Becca knows what I'm talking about. I do know. I think we broke Mr. Curious. So let's start. Uh, Gabe, give me, give me an idea. Uh, for a cosm, just by itself, like a single idea that we're going to mash up with something else. What is a story genre, or a movie genre, or something that you love that we could then blend together into a, um, a so, so any alternate? Reaction? So I'm giving one comment, and someone else is going to give another one, and we're going to mix them. Yeah, and we're like going to mash it together until AI the, art style. Yeah, AI art style. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the chat wants edit power. All right, we'll give you edit power. So what's our first? What's our first? component of this of this uh mini cosm that the fet five will visit at some point yeah uh the, whatever cosm all the beach boys songs take place in okay so we have california dreaming okay all right so, so we're, we're looking at like 50s slash 60s it's like car races surfing Surf girls on the beach Beach blanket bingo, uh, you know, drag races and ukuleles. Okay, okay. What and are we gonna sock hops. Okay, so like Pirates. 50s, okay. like 50s, yeah, 50s, but like, like idealized 50s. Yeah, okay. pirates. Like with that. Roadsters and chrome, yeah, okay. Plus pirates? Pirates. Yeah. Okay, so you're thinking like road pirates? Or are you thinking like actual art? And so I was, I was going with R, but you got to take the R and mash it with, you know, the, the 50s VAP here and like. All right. So I've got a couple of ideas from the chat that I like in here, too, because Cold War. So what if we do a, I mean, because we have Sloop John B, mm -hmm. who is obviously one of the pirates, mm -hmm. like a pirate ship. 
we've got pirates, and we've got some weird dream time. We've also got Wendy. Wendy, don't lose. No, I mean, she goes with pirates. California dream time sounds like. We're dropping a lot of acid here. <laughs> It is acid rock. Like, uh, mm. What is the uh, what is the quintessential sound that comes to mind? Uh, Good vibrations. Nope. <laughs> when we think of when I think of acid rock, I think of the song Three Headed. Is it Three Headed Dog? <laughs> if anyone knows the song I'm thinking of, I can figure this out. Mm. I'm dropping musical knowledge on it. No, no, and then, no, man. You, I, I'm reading what the Mr. Fury. Oh, okay. Are you thinking yellow matter custard dripping from a dead dog's eye? No. But that's that's eye for balls. <laughs> Is that it? Is it two headed dog? By Roy. Yeah, no, it's two headed dog, two headed dog. I've been working in the Kremlin with a two headed dog. Yes, it wasn't three heads. It was two heads. We will listen to it afterwards. We will listen to it afterwards because if I played it, we would violate Twitch's uh, youth policy. All right, so we have some, we have a weird dreamlike experience, which I think is core to the Beach Boys kind of 50s thing. I think the Cold War does give us a dark undertone of what's going on here. So are you like playing breaking a bunch of spies into this mix? <laughs> like <laughs> white knights and sat what? Um and pirates. So how do we how do we mash this all together? How do we beat this mini costume? Okay, so when I think of pirates and I think of the fifties, I immediately think air pirates. Like we're not talking mm-hmm. like we're thinking like like tailspin. What, what if we go tailspin and have sea points? I mean that's to my mind yeah, I mean we're thinking fifties. Off the coast of California, barrier islands. Uh, is I this... think we should go to Neverland, but Neverland is yes. like the 1950s California. Yes, yes. that's that's Where, what like, I the was mermaids thinking. are like ba- beach babes, and the pirates all drive, you know, sky planes or sky planes. Or I was going to say like. Roasters, yeah, yeah, a little uh, treasure and, planet, and you know what else? The I mean, Indian... treasure planet is just a tour cause of waiting to happen. Yeah, like, right. All right, so let me ask you this: um, What is its highest axiom? So the rubber the axioms are tech, social, magic, and spirit. Spirit. Thank you. Spirit governs miracles. Social governs. How developed civilization is, but also psionics. Tech is technology, and magic obviously governs. I think it's social. Like yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got to be social. I like guess part of the one of the parts of the fifties is uh, fitting in. Mm-hmm. Like there's not that it was like the, the only idea, but there was a major theme of being part of something. All right, I like Josh's mm-hmm. second one as uh, tech. And yes, I'm getting a major Grease vibe from this too, Mr. Furious, because we all know Grease is Sandy's last minute death death dream before she drowns. Well, Which is why the car flies away at the end of it. Well, so if we're adding Cold War to it... (laughs) It's true. Uh, If we want to add Cold War to it, then there's all there's that idea of like you don't know who to trust. Do you trust, you know, the boys that look like they're having a good time, or? So what if we made a little darker twist with that? Because you know I'm all mm-hmm. about adding the darker twist to it. Oh, what yeah. if it's right? Because one of the big fears of the Cold War, as we see in shows like The Americans, is being infiltrated, right? And mm-hmm. as Ben said, being one of the you know being in was the thing to do. What if we add a little Stepford Wives pod people thing so, to the So what I'm hearing is basically we're recreating the island from Lost, except it's actually yeah. the land. Because there's, there's, a, there's a whole sort of Cold War vibe, like who owns the island sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, here's the thing. 
I don't, not that I'm not that I love that idea, but I'm, I'm actually that's, no. that's immediately popping to mind with sort of the Cold War and we're on an island. No, because the because Lost <sighs> yes. was the Cold War <laughs> and more uh, Lord of the Flies. Right, but I, I mean, love like the Lost Boy like, Vampires. Ooh, and Lost Boy Vampires. <laughs> okay, hey, Sparkle. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, we've got some ideas here. Tech would be 21 or 22, I agree. Uh, uh, what if you are actually experiencing all of this because you're being interrogated by the KGB hole under the influence of psychedelics? Uh, so you yeah, guys, you I guys, like that. You guys are... You That's guys... not just the darker twist. That's the darker <laughs> this twist. This sounds like, the, <laughs> like we're actually inside the curve. What if this is all actually what is being experienced? By the B team in their oh. captivity. What if what if we somehow get in the, the B team's dreams? Alright, this rabbit hole has gone way deeper. I do like having something called the law of trust. Mm-hmm. We will make that that law up. And the law of conformity. The law of trust and the law of conformity. Ooh, yeah. No, no, it's the 50s, so everybody trusts everybody, but then... Obviously. Except when you don't. Yeah. Because they don't conform. Those right. two laws would have to yeah. work together. Mm -hmm. And all the ampersands, yeah, like, like let's just, let's just call the Lost Boys what it is, which is a classic piece of American cinema. I went there this summer. Yeah. To the Lost Boys? No. Well, I mean... <laughs> there was some things. Excellent players! No, I, I went to the boardwalk. It's great. Well, uh, it's fun. They have like a really old. Mr. Fury is a good point. McCarthyism is. is but see, the whole reason that's that I, that worked is because you were supposed to be able to trust everybody. Right. Supposed to be able to trust everybody. So just pointing at somebody and saying you're a communist was enough to ruin their life. No, 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 no. They had to be. They had to be a weirdo first. That's the whole point. That's you true. could point to any weirdo and use the threat of communism to get them excluded because they were already mm -hmm. weird. Okay. Yeah. Right, Would there got? also be a law of nationality, like, because we got conformism, we've got trust, but then there's also the like, ooh, like exclusion or or nationalism, like you're, it kind of goes with conformism. Yeah, like, no, I think the you're law either of with us or you're against. Trust as this like duo, yeah, works. No, like... but I, I see your biggest story. Actually, I kind of want like if if you guys are okay with it, I would take this completely removed from core earth. Like, there is this idea mm -hmm. that this is all working together, but we'll give it some different name, and it won't be America. It won't right. be the U.S., but it'll be... Mm -hmm. right. right, and this would be, like, mid... I'm gonna torture you all Midwest <laughs> U.S., right? Like, the, the, lost la the Savage Lands are on the outskirts of the United States. No, no, so this would actually... So many cosmos... I, get to, I right. get to come up with the rules of how you get to them and where they overlap. So this may not actually be a physical place that you have to go to. Right, but like visually, it would be like kind of the Midwest suburbia slash that California dream of uh, Neverland. It would, it oh, that'd be sense. wild. All right. And you're right, a mini cosm does work well in the living. It's, it's like it's all coming together. It's all coming together. Well, it's together. like Land of the Lost, you know? You're like wandering through the jungle, and all of a sudden you're in a 1950s suburbia right on the beach. That's right. Mm hmm. All that right. would be terrifying. I think that's literally a Land of the Lost episode. So, so California Dreamtime is what we're going to call the name of this. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have this weird, almost ethereal something is off kind of feel to it. Unpleasant film. Ooh, that is... <laughs> I'm writing that one down, Certified to Organic. Yeah, no, the laws of, laws of trust and conformity is like this terrible yin-yang. All right, guys, I think that is a good place to stop. We will we will make that this, this happen. This will be, at some point, the Fat Five will encounter this big concept. We will see how it plays out. We will have little, uh, if, I, if we can get it, we'll put together a little PDF that'll have like the overview of the Cosm and the rules. And we'll see kind of how that works out. And we'll make it available to Iconic Patrons uh, because that would, that would be a tough one. So again, uh, 
we had a a a light crew tonight, so we decided to do this interlude uh, episode. I hope you guys have all enjoyed it. We always love chatting with all of you. Uh, Phantom, Certified, Mr. Furious, Josh, Zero Earth Element, always good to see you. We'll be back next Tuesday with, ooh, all right, putting that in. Magic. Um, we'll see you guys next Tuesday for a full episode, possibly with a guest star for just uh, a single night. Can't make any promises, but we'll see what happens. And we'll be back on Thursday with the first part of our transhumanism look on Behind the Screen. So, as always, thank you to all of my crew, uh, especially tonight to uh, Becca and Ben and Gabe, uh, Jenny and uh, other Ben. We look forward to seeing you guys next week. And uh, we are right now at the axioms of Social 22, Tech 22, Magic 16. And I don't think Spirit would be that hot. Mm -mm. We'll figure that out. So uh, we will, I will post all of this on the iconic. Exactly, that's where we're at. I'll post all of this on the iconic production Torg Eternity Discord channel. We can discuss Unpleasantville. The California Dream Time, uh, and let the uh, patrons help refine this for when we finally torture. I mean, uh, take. It's a, I knew it was another T word. Uh, the that five to this mini cosmic. So, from everyone at Iconic, thank you so much for tuning in. We will be back next week. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay game. We'll see you all in a week. Have a good one.